the one, the only, Ben Bankus. Amazing. I, I'm happy to be back in Canada. Not really. But uh, since I'm in Canada, I thought I'd bring some tampons for some of the men here. So if there's any here, some of the guys. Okay, this one's for any trans men in the room that might be. Uh, this guy. Beautiful to be back. <laughs> I like what you've done with the place. <laughs> Living in America now, and it's, it's different. You know, I'm doing shows, and I'm not American. I don't know as much about America. I'm Canadian, but I am racist. And I'm fat, so I've been welcomed with open arms. <laughs> Especially in Texas. They're like, you know, we don't like Canadians, but at least you're not Mexican. <laughs> That's the real racism in the States with the, the Mexicans when they cross the border illegally. And then they get captured by ICE. And then they wrap them in those aluminum foil blankets. It's pretty racist. Like, welcome to America, you're a burrito now. They're like, where are my children? They're like, oh, those little tacos? Little side order? Yeah, they're in a different cage. They're having a good time, though. We gave them a free Kamala Harris children's book. <laughs> They're flipping through that. They got all kinds of people sneaking through the southern border in America because everybody wants to live in America. They got, they got Chinese people now sneaking through the southern border. They, they somehow get to Mexico, and then they sneak through, and they get captured by ICE. Have you seen those videos where they line up the Chinese guys, and they're like... Where are you from? The guy's like, oh, uh, Nicaragua. <laughs> Next guy's like, oh, Colombia. <laughs> Last guy can't even say, he's like, oh, Venezuela. At least in America, their border crisis is at the border. All right, Canada's crisis at Pearson Airport. And all the customs agents are Indian, so they don't give a fuck. They're like, okay, welcome home. Come in, come, come. We have so many Indians, we have like the same percentage of Indians in Canada as America has black people. So it's, you know, it's safer, but it smells worse. <laughs> I love Indian people, but even they'll admit, like even when Indian people walk in a room of Indian people, they're like, oh shit. <laughs> and like the Indians, they do it when they walk into a room full of white people, they go, oh my God, smell like shampoo in here. They're using head and shoulder, I'm using balls and asshole, I don't know. <laughs> a lot of racism out there. I mean, there's a little bit in here tonight, but it's for entertainment purposes. Hotels, hotels are racist. You go to the hotel, they got signs in the hallway, please keep it down in the hallway. <laughs> Might as well say no blacks allowed at that point, that's... Or they'll have a sign, no cooking in the rooms. That's for Chinese people. 
They'll bring a hot plate to a comfort inn. They will. <laughs> well, what? I want to cook a broccoli. Why can't I? I'm gonna boil some water, and then I'm gonna cook a bro. I'm gonna steam a broccoli. It's a steam. There's no smell. Black people, black people love smoking weed in hotels, and white people, we smoke weed in hotels too. We just don't get caught. Cause we do it different. White people, we smoke weed in hotels. We're already apprehensive. We're like, fuck, we shouldn't do this. And then we light it for a second. We're like, oh, fuck, put it out. <laughs> Black people just smoke 15 blunts in there. And they'll leave, like, the blunt guts on the, next to the trash on the carpet. And then when they check out the next day, they get the charge. They're all pissed off. They're like, what do you mean I owe you $250? Is that because I'm black? It's like, yeah, kinda. <laughs> Smoke 15 blunts in there, man. Chinese guys behind him like, see, they didn't smell a broccoli. <laughs> That's why you steam a broccoli, you don't smoke a broccoli. <laughs> they got Chinese people in Texas. And, uh, yeah, they, they're different than our Chinese people because they have guns. <laughs> and they're proud of it. They're like, see that? That's why I moved to Texas, right there. <laughs> yeah, to protect my grandmother. <laughs> my grandmother, she used to live in uh, San Francisco. <laughs> and the Joel Freud cousin press a square button. Well, now I protect my grandmother in my taser. Yeah, that's why I moved to taser. To shoot a black person. Riggery. No, Chinese people do not fuck around in Texas. They're like, you come within the six feet, the mask come off, the gun come out. The That's how they practice at the range, just <laughs> That's how I shoot him and then I don't get the COVID. <laughs> Bang, oh. <laughs> but I'm, you know, I'm not actually racist. We all have our moments. We all have our moments. Like for me, I'll be watching the news and they'll come on them and they'll be like, family of four dead in a car accident. And for some reason, I picture them being white. And I picture like the blonde wife and the cute kids. And like, I, I feel bad. But then they'll come on five minutes later and be like, it was an international student from Mumbai going the wrong way on the 401. And I'm like, thank God. I almost had to feel bad about that. That was... Or they'll come on, they'll be like, they were black. I'm like, probably speeding. <laughs> right? What kind of Hellcat was it? Was it a Challenger or a Charger? Oh, it was a Durango. There you go. It's never Chinese people. Chinese people never die in car accidents. They cause them. <laughs> right? Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Then they look in the rear view and go, oh, that looked really bad. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's okay. It's a haircut. It's a haircut. <laughs> I did it for my grandmother in San Francisco.
Well, people are worried. People are worried right now about World War III. And they're worried that the West, we're not going to win. You know, because the troops are all trans and gay and <laughs> fucking retarded. But personally, I think a trans, a gay, and a retard could beat up a Chinese guy. <laughs> no, everybody's so confused with the, with the trans thing, but it's like, wait till the war happens. It's going to be an asset. Get a dude with a wig popping up. The Chinese are like, is that a boy or a oop? Is that a transgender? <laughs> it's going to be our whole strategy when we go to war. It's going to be like, all right, the trans are going to flank from the left. And then we're going to send everybody who does Uber Eats up the middle. <laughs> the trans thing is... Causing a lot of problems for companies, Planet Fitness. They got in trouble. They lost $400 million on the stock market because a trans person went in the women's washroom and it wasn't a good one. Like it was just me with a pink towel on. My balls hanging out like... What, you, you ever seen a vagina before, bitch? You don't like that? You don't like that? And so a woman took a picture of the guy, or a girl, depends who you vote for. And went to the front desk to complain. And you know the people who work at Planet Fitness, like, we don't give a fuck. They look at the picture and they're like, listen, we're going to cancel your membership for trying to make me do something. And this lady filmed it, it went viral. It was all over the internet. And people were commenting, they're like, this is woke policy at work. I'm like, no, this is a $10 a month gym membership. <laughs> if you're paying 10 bucks a month, you're gonna see some nuts in the women's washroom. <laughs> like for 10 bucks a month, you're lucky if you don't step on a fucking needle in the shower. <laughs> 400 million on the stock market. And I'm thinking, who the fuck is buying Planet Fitness stock? <laughs> like, what's this guy's portfolio? Like, I got Planet Fitness, I got Staples. <laughs> Just picked up some Red Lobster. <laughs> I always thought Planet Fitness was for black people. That's why all the machines are grape flavored. But for real, 20% of Gen Z in America is gay. 20% of Gen Z in America is gay. People can't believe it there. They're like, how could this happen in America? It's like, wow. Have you seen how morbidly obese the women are? I'm just saying, go to a Target. You're like, see that? Yeah, I'd rather suck a dick. Then I have to get her out of that chair. I'd even fuck one of those women in the scooters. You gotta flip them upside down in it like you're fixing a bicycle. All right, let's take a wheel off here. Right. Can you feel that? Just saying, I'm an ally. I'm an ally. <laughs> But that's the crazy thing is that people are, have no money. <laughs> and to me, the conservative guys seem that they want to like fix stuff, like make people rich. And then the liberal people are just like, what about the trans? <laughs> and like somebody needs to at some point stand up and be like, Nobody gives a fuck. 
and then we just move on. I'm just saying, you don't wake, what do you wake up in the morning worrying about? Do you wake up in the morning and you're like, oh my God, are trans people okay today? Oh, you're like, fuck, I need fucking plastic bags, $85. What the fuck is... Every time I go to Sobeys, I fucking... Indian spits in my rotisserie chicken. Like, things are so bad that even women are looking around going, fuck, I probably shouldn't have the right to vote. <laughs> they're, just, they're just walking, it's only Indians. They're like, hmm, I think this is my fault, actually. <laughs> like, I, I like Trump. I like Trump. Whatever you Think whatever you want, but, you know, I like Trump because I have a dad. And if you have a dad, everything Trump says, you're just like, oh, shit, that's my dad. Yeah, my dad said that last week. That's fucking... Whereas Kamala's like, oh, mom's drunk again watching CNN. That fucking bitch. Can we stop this madness? Liberals are always correcting you. It's Kemala. You're like, are you sure? They're like, no. But I know that you're wrong. Well, Kamala is not going to do a good job because she's a woman. As we know, women, not great at doing stuff. Remember what happened with the Secret Service? <laughs> Female pilots? How do you feel when you see that? You fear. You feel fear. Even women do, they see that and they're like, oh, fuck. And the female pilots, they're so into it, right? They, like, stand and look at all the passengers and like, eh. it's like, get in that room, bitch. Figure this shit out. I'd rather a trans pilot than a female pilot. Because at least at one point, she knew how to fly. tell me not to like Trump. They're like, how can you like a guy that said, grab her by the pussy when you have a daughter? I'm like, well, how do you think I make her mother come? <laughs> or they'll be like, how can you like a guy that cheated on his wife with a porn star? I'm like, do I really look like I don't think that's cool? But if, you know, if the war starts, well, we're going to blame the Jews. And... I mean, it is their fault. But... Is it a genocide? I don't know. All I know is if there's any group who should be allowed to do one, Let them have it. <laughs> right? It's like, you know, my dad beat me, I beat my kid. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not genocide. It's a, it's it's called gentrification. Okay? It's, it's a little more upscale than that. It's we're trying to get the first Starbucks in Ramallah. And unfortunately, some children need to die for that. Right, that's the tougher material of the night. Anyway. Okay. People, every, everybody hates a Jew until you, know, you get arrested. 
Then you're like, I need one of these motherfuckers. Like, I need a Rosen something. Get arrested, they give you a lawyer, you're reading it, and you're like, Devante. Fuck, I guess I'm going to jail. I And Jews will defend anybody. They'll have a whole law firm and be like, welcome to Rosenstein and Rosenstein Law Firm, uh, specializing in Palestinian protest arrests. <laughs> Arrested in a Palestine protest? Call 1-800-I-NEED-A-JEW today. <laughs> and we'll get you back on the street faster than you can say from the river to the... Okay. Um, <laughs> But people are like Jews around the world. It's like, well, who else do you want doing that? Indians? <laughs> Can't even run a fucking Tim Hortons. <laughs> okay. If Islam... <laughs> if Islam is such a great religion, then how come the capital of Pakistan is called Islamabad? Is anybody questioning this? Imagine the capital of Israel was just called Jews are bad. Jews would still go. They'd be like, every year we go to Jews are bad. <laughs> They'd shorten the name to like, oh, beautiful beaches in Jews are bad. We love Jews are bad. Couple rockets, but they... every rocket you see, that's 20 kids dead for them. <laughs> no, I was at the uh, I, was, I was in New York City I went to the Freedom Tower and I got in the elevator to go to the top floor it's like a lookout and there's a Muslim woman in there with like the full niqab <laughs> in the elevator to go up and I'm looking at her like come on You know why they built this, right? <laughs> I don't know if you've been there. They have, the elevators have like TV screens in them so you can watch and it like shows you, you go up the elevator as like New York gets built around you. And it's really cool. But like the whole time everybody's looking at each other like, well, so when's the plane hit in this fucking video? <laughs> and the Muslim woman's like, any minute now. I was at the mall, I saw like 15 women in burkas come in. And I'm just thinking like, where the fuck are they shopping? <laughs> Not a lot of options. Right, sunglass hut. <laughs> Foot locker. <laughs> lids, maybe lids. <laughs> I guess they're just lost looking for fabric land or something. <laughs> fabric land. Fabric land. It's nice that there's, there's women here tonight. No, I just think women. Uh, You're not nice enough. It's different. Okay, if you have like a Filipino wife, it's different, right? Because then you come home, she does the feet. She does. <laughs> right, you date a Filipino, it's like dating a personal support worker. It's incredible. She's fucking wiping your ass and jerking you off. And like, is this okay, Mr. Manga? And I'm like a little to the left, actually. A little to the... It's, it's tough to date you because, you know, you, you all have your, you, you have the ick now. You get the ick. You know what the ick is? It's like when you're, like as a guy, you're dating a woman, you do something inconsequential you don't notice, and she notices and she gets turned off. 
Like, you can have your pocket inside out all night, and she sees that, and she's like, oh, I'm never sucking that guy's dick ever again. <laughs> but women, you don't realize, men get the ick, too, as soon as we come. <laughs> Just saying, ladies, when we, when we break up with you, we don't, you know, we miss the sex, and that's it. Like, when we miss you, we, like, we just see your butthole, like, this close to our eye. Like, we'll just have flashbacks of your butthole, and we're just like, fuck. Miss that little guy. <laughs> or you'll have a flashback to the time she blew you in the Jeep or some shit like that. We're not sitting there being like, fuck, I wish I was being yelled at in the kitchen right now. <laughs> just saying, ladies, be nicer to us, because, guys, we have options. I know, lady, you think you have the options. No, look, we could go to Thailand. <laughs> we could, and for 200 bucks, we could learn what it really means to be treated properly. <laughs> Where are you gonna go after the divorce, ladies? To India and get gang raped? <laughs> can already do that here in Brampton. <laughs> Just saying, ladies do a lot of, you know. <laughs> like, go to therapy. Just go, because the guys, we can't go. I know a lot of ladies like, yeah, you can. It's like, not with the shit I'm trying to say. I need a Jewish lawyer for that. You can't tell the therapist to be like, I'm going to fucking kill this bitch. If you tell a good Jewish lawyer, he's like, eh, as long as it's not in writing. It's tough. It's tough when we're dating women and guys, we do stupid shit and then we piss girls off. But I think we're always the first to apologize. We're always right there being like, my bad. And there's some women in here like, that's not true. It's like, that's because you don't listen. Because <laughs> we apologize. We're always like, I'm sorry. And women are like, I don't accept your apology yet. <laughs> yet. What the fuck is that yet? It's like, I want to put you through psychological torture. <laughs> for what you did to me. <laughs> and then they do shit to you, right? The silent treatment, no sex, whatever it is to fucking make you feel sad. It makes guys feel sad. But you ever with your girl and she's having a really good time? It's almost more annoying. <laughs> like you ever take her to a concert or something? She's jumping up and down like, this is so fun. You're like, <laughs> what I would do to watch you crying on the bathroom floor right now. But Trudeau's a single guy. There's this. You think he's walking around with Sophie's butthole right here? Just <laughs> Jagmeet's butthole? <laughs> Jagmeet Singh's butthole is so hairy, it has a turban on it. <laughs> and everybody says that Trudeau's fucking him, but so let's, let's imagine that for a moment here. Let's. Just imagine Jagmeet Singh naked, bent over. <laughs> Justin Trudeau has just removed his back turban. <laughs> and he's fucking him and he grabs him by the hair, but he fucking pulls the other turban off. <laughs> and Trudeau feels shame because he's woke, right? He's like, oh my God, Jagmeet. He's like covering his eyes. He's like, oh, I won't look. I won't look. <laughs> Jagmeet just looks back and goes, it's okay, put it on. <laughs> yeah, that's just an ad for free dental. <laughs> now, I've been making fun of Chinese women for a long time. For uh, Four years. We all remember what happened four years ago. So during the pandemic, Canada's Dr. Fauci is a Chinese woman. Her name is Teresa Tam. And 
she was, you know, she was famous because she, you know, it was hilarious. Every, everything that Fauci said, but in a Chinese accent, right? <laughs> everything. Just said, don't wear, you know, don't go outside. Wear the mask. Don't walk your dog after 9 p.m. You can eat a dog, just don't walk a dog. <laughs> By the way, Chinese people loving that Haitians are eating dogs and cats right now. <laughs> Chinese people are like, oh, finally, somebody eat a dog, not me. <laughs> That's why I vote for Donald Trump. <laughs> it's not an Asian eating cat, it's a Haitian eating cat. So I made fun of her, and then of course Olivia Chow, who is <laughs> she's uh, she's the worst. She ran for mayor. I ran as well as a joke, and it was it's okay. It's <laughs> whatever. I got 200 votes, which is was kind of interesting, but it's fucked up. But. <laughs> Towards the end, I knew I was going to lose. I was just putting on a wig saying I was Olivia Chow and all that shit. <laughs> and Olivia Chow, she's famous because her ex-husband, Jack Layton, or she calls him Jack Rayton. <laughs> he, he was a famous politician in Canada, and he got caught at a rub and tug, which is very funny because his wife's also Chinese. <laughs> so she was extra pissed off. She was like, what does she do I can do? She go right there, I go right now. <laughs> and then Olivia went super viral with the rain tax. She came up with a controversial tax for the rain. She's like, well, the rain fall on the... Oh, read me explain with a song. The easy busy spider where all the water spout. The okay, the rain. You know how her face is like falling to one side. The water spider. Okay, the sun drop all the rain. And then you pay your tax. So I did that. <laughs> and then news came out of China that they were making half human, half monkey hybrids <laughs> in a laboratory <laughs> in Wuhan, China. So I downloaded Snapchat <laughs> and made a, did the monkey face filter and made a few videos where I was like, I am the half human, half monkey animal hybrid from a laboratory in a Wuhan, China. And then I would just do dumb shit, like I'd be at the airport and I'd be like, oh, happy Juneteenth to all the black people. Um, <laughs> so I did all that and, uh, and now we're here. We're selling out a lot of shows, so that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. done a lot of comedy I, uh, 13 years and um, well yeah it's it, whatever but I've done a lot of bad shows this was not a bad show this was a good show like I've performed for just three Jamaican women in a Jamaican restaurant in Oakville for 150 bucks they said it was going to be packed, and then it was just three Jamaican ladies. No proper mic. It was just a karaoke machine. And every time I, I like, they were religious, so every time I swore, they were just like, Oh, Lord Jesus, don't mishear that, my goodness gracious. And at one point, a cop came in to buy jerk chicken and just saw me trying to do stand-up there. And just, we made eye contact, and I'm like, yeah, man, this is a bad gig. That's what this is. <laughs> stayed, in, stayed in hotels that 
you can't even you can't even rent anymore because it's uh, all only for refugees. I stayed in a, a hotel. The room number was zero eight five, and the guy's like, "Yeah, it's a basement suite." I'm like, how the fuck? He's a young guy. I'm like, how am I gonna get pussy if I take a girl back to the lobby of the hotel? I go to the elevator. I push down. <laughs> no, my mom. My mom would have been proud. My mom passed away. Uh, not that long ago. Um, yeah, she was uh, put down by the Trudeau government. <laughs> no, my mom, she had uh, dementia and pancreatic cancer, so I, you know, I wanted to put her down. <laughs> so I asked the doctor about it. I was curious. I was like, you know, she's got pancreatic cancer. She's got dementia. Like, would, you, would she qualify for MAID? And, and he was like, no. I was like, what would it take? <laughs> yeah, I felt like I was doing a real estate deal. I was like, how do, we, how do we get this over the line here? What are the margins on my mom's death? Can we? And he goes, okay, we would do it under one condition. I was like, what's that? He's like, if we do it if she was trans. <laughs> so right before my mother passed away, we went through the process. Yeah, it was really hard to watch my dad die like that. And you guys have been fucking awesome. My name is Ben Bankus. I love you guys. Thank you, Toronto. Good night. This show was incredible. I laughed nonstop. Best time. Third or fourth time seeing Ben, so. Ben's great. You're amazing. We watch your oh, comedy so nice. all the time. We recite it around the house. Oh, I've been to Bill Burr, Tim Dillon, Segura. Honestly, this is the hardest I've laughed the whole time. We need more people like that in the world. And my jaw's hurting from laughing. I recommend it to so many people. Honestly, if you want a good laugh, then come see Ben.